welcome to this episode of Ask Aviel. My name is Aviel. You can ask me questions so that we can share, learn and grow together. Today I will talk about garments. A garment is an article of clothing. It is worn on the body. Garments are made of fabrics and textiles such as wool, linen, silk or material made from animal skin. A garment serves many purposes. It can serve as a protection from the elements and rough surfaces by providing a barrier between the skin and the environment. A garment can insulate against cold or hot conditions. It can protect from injury. Sometimes garments have pockets, belts or loops to provide a way to carry things while freeing the hands. Garments have significant social factors as well as connote modesty. When Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, their eyes were opened. They realised that they had missed the mark and sinned. They realised that they were naked. After Adam and Eve sinned, they tried to cover themselves with something they had made with their own hands. They tried to sew fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Instead, God had something better for them. He gave them garments of skin. Genesis 3.21 Adonai Elohim made Adam and his wife garments of skin and he clothed them. The clothing worn by Adam and Eve signified the atonement that had been made on their behalf and they were restored and reconciled with God. Rebecca took her elder son Esau's favourite clothes that were with her in the house. She put the garments on her younger son Jacob, along with the skins of two young goats on his hands and on the hairless part of his neck. Jacob used Esau's garments as a disguise. Jacob wore Esau's clothes because he was worried that his blind father would feel him and realise that the smooth skin did not belong to Esau but to his younger brother Jacob. Jacob dressed himself in the garments of his brother Esau and brought his father Isaac a bowl of food and claimed the blessing of the firstborn. It was not only the texture of the garment, but also the smell of the clothes that caused Isaac to believe that Jacob was Esau. When Jacob smelled the smell of the garments of Esau on Jacob, he blessed Jacob, thinking that he was Esau. Joseph owned a finely embroidered robe or coat of many colours. His father Jacob gave this special garment to him. This clearly marked Joseph to be the favourite son of Jacob. This special garment of many stripes and colours declared Joseph to be Jacob's official firstborn. This meant that he would inherit a double portion as a firstborn should. Joseph's brothers brought back the garment of many colours to their father Jacob. It was stained in blood. Joseph's blood-stained garment was produced by the brothers to conceal the fact that they were responsible for Joseph's disappearance. They brought it to their father and they said, We found this. Do you recognise whether or not it is your son's garment? Jacob recognised it and said, My son's garment, an evil animal has devoured him. Joseph must be torn to pieces. Jacob tore his own garments and put on sackcloth and mourned for his son many days. All his sons got up with all his daughters to console him, but he refused to be comforted. He said, For I will go down to Sheol, to my son, mourning. So his father kept weeping for him. When Jacob saw the blood-stained garment, Jacob believed that a wild animal must have seized him. The brothers were capable of selling their brother as a slave because of the garment their father gave him. Now Joseph was sold to slavery in Egypt. He was handsome in form and handsome in appearance. The master's wife lifted up her eyes at Joseph and said, Come, lie down with me. But he refused. Day after day, he did not listen to her invitation to be with her. Now on one such day, he came into the house to do his work, and none of the people of the house were there in the house. Then the master's wife grabbed him by his garment, saying, Come, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hand, fled, and went outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and fled outside, she screamed to the men of her house and said to them, Look, someone brought a Hebrew man to us to fool with us. He approached me to lie with me, so I screamed out loud. 
when he heard me raise my voice and scream, he left his garment with me, fled and went outside. Then she kept the garment with her until the master came home. She spoke the same words to him, saying, The Hebrew slave that you brought us approached me to fool with me. When I raised my voice and screamed, he left his garment with me and fled outside. Joseph left his garment in the hands of Potiphar's wife while escaping her attempt to seduce him. Potiphar's wife used the evidence of Joseph's torn garment to substantiate her claim that he had tried to rape her, a crime of which he was totally innocent. After Joseph interpreted Pharaoh's dream, Pharaoh appointed him as ruler over the whole land of Egypt. Pharaoh removed his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, clothed him with fine garments and put a chain of gold around his neck. Pharaoh dressed Joseph as a high-ranking Egyptian with clothes of linen, a gold chain and the royal signet ring. Because Joseph was wearing different garments, his brothers did not recognize him when they went to Egypt to buy food. Tamar took off her widow's garments, covering herself with a veil and making herself look as if she were a prostitute. Tamar put on different garments. She set herself up on the roadside. She covered her face to be unrecognizable and sat down on the side of the road that Judah would be taking. Because she had changed her garments, Judah could not recognize his daughter-in-law Tamar. Judah believed his daughter-in-law was a prostitute and asked to sleep with her. She agreed, provided Judah would leave his seal, cord and staff as pledges for payment. Tamar changed into different garments and carried out her plan for a noble reason. Tamar forced Judah to fulfill the leverate duties to perpetuate the name of Judah's dead son Ur. Er. Using a veil, Tamar ensured that the name of her deceased husband Ur er was perpetuated. Tamar's disguise as a veiled prostitute was intended to deceive Judah into sleeping with her since she wanted to have a child to raise up the name of her dead husband Ur. Er. After the exodus of the children of Israel from Egypt, the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments and be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. So Moses consecrated the people, and they washed their garments. God told the people of Israel to wash their garments as part of the preparation for his arrival at Mount Sinai and for the establishment of the covenant of Moses. Clean garments symbolized their right standing before God in preparation to receive the covenant of Mount Sinai. Clean garments were necessary for entrance into a covenant with God. Exodus 28 contains a detailed description of the eight pieces of garments God commanded to be made and worn by the priests. These were sacred garments to dress Aaron and his sons for splendor and for beauty. All the garments worn by priests were symbolic of being set apart for God's work of atoning for sin. Aaron and his sons must wear the garments whenever they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar to minister in the holy place so that they would not incur guilt and die. God used distinctive garments to set his spiritual leaders apart from the other Israelites. Each piece of the priestly garments held significance related to the work the priests performed. In Zechariah 3, Joshua the high priest had his filthy garments removed from him and he was left standing in pure vestments. In the midst of change of garments, Joshua was told by the angel of the Lord that his iniquity had been taken away from him. His clothes were pure, symbolizing the removal of his iniquity. In Ruth chapter 3, Naomi told Ruth to wash and perfume herself, to put on her cloak and go down to the threshing floor where Boaz was so that she could ask Boaz to take her in marriage. On the surface, it seemed like Naomi had instructed Ruth to make herself clean, pretty and smell good. But if we read the scriptures on a deeper level, Naomi was telling Ruth to wash herself, meaning to perform an immersion to signify turning 180 degrees from mourning her widowhood to start a new life. Naomi was instructing Ruth to anoint herself just like how the priests were anointed as they made themselves ready for service. Naomi also instructed Ruth to put on her best garment. 
she was to no longer adorn herself in clothes fit for a mourning widow, but to dress herself with different garments, as Naomi perhaps had some sort of prophetic vision that Ruth's life would now completely take a different direction and change. Yeshua talked about an example of old and new garments, making a contrast between the new and the old. No one tears a patch from the new garment to use it on an old garment. Otherwise, he will rip the new and the patch from the new will not match the old. It makes no sense to tear off a piece from a new garment to patch an old one. Once a new garment is available, it is wholly incompatible with the old. The two coverings are incompatible. We have to choose one or the other. If a new garment is available, we would be foolish to use it to mend an old, defective one. When Yeshua was being crucified on the cross, the soldiers, when they executed Yeshua, took his outer garments and made four parts, a part for each soldier. They took his garment also, but it was seamless, woven top to bottom in one piece. So they said to one another, Let's not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see whose it will be. This was so the scripture would be fulfilled. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things, and when they had crucified him, they divided his clothing among themselves by casting lots. This shows that Yeshua came all the way to accomplish our salvation. He let go of everything, even his last bit of clothing, becoming completely poor for us so that we could become completely rich in him. The garment was without seams, woven from the top in one piece. The main garment Yeshua wore was so well made that it was better to not tear it into four parts. Each of the four soldiers guarding him had already received one of his other outer garments. Yeshua's seamless tunic reminds us of his role as our great high priest because Exodus 28.32 tells us that the high priest wore a seamless garment. The soldiers cast lots for his garment, fulfilling the prophecy of Psalm 22.18. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. At the second coming of Yeshua, heaven is opened, and behold, a white horse. The one riding on it is called Faithful and True. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and many crowns are on his head. He is clothed in a garment dipped in blood, and the armies of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. When the wedding of the Lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready, she was given fine linen to wear, bright and clean. For the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the Kadoshim or saints. The garments of the bride of the Lamb are the righteous deeds of the saints, and this provides the bride with fine linen, bright, clean, pure and white. Psalm 104, 2 Adonai our God is clothed with splendor and majesty. He wraps himself in light as a garment. In scripture, going all the way back to the Garden of Eden, garments of clothing are common symbols of righteousness. Matthew 22 teaches us that inappropriate clothing will keep a person out of a wedding feast. Isaiah 64, 6 says that all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Our righteousness is not good enough. We need to have Messiah's righteousness imputed to us. We must put on the righteousness of Messiah and be conformed to it. This garment will fit and cover us appropriately. Our works with the covering of Messiah becomes our new covering garment as we become one with Him and submit to taking on His image. We will be dressed in righteousness that comes from God's work in us and through us. Thank you for joining me. I pray that this message inspires and challenges you. God bless you and your family. Shalom.